Now the house is mine. If you have any complaints, let's get a divorce. I felt giddy as Ben happily told me he had changed the house to his name shortly after my father's death. There's no way such a change of ownership could be that easy. I thought Ben might be misunderstanding something. If that's the case, I don't mind getting a divorce. But won't you regret it? Not expecting me to agree to a divorce, Ben exclaimed in surprise. What? There's no way I would regret it. Ben replied with full confidence. Will he truly not regret it? If so, I won't hold back either. If he regrets it later, it's not my concern. I laughed inwardly at Ben's naive thinking. I am Kathy Anderson, a 35-year-old public servant with a hard-working personality. I believe that my current profession as a public servant suits me the most. When I passed the civil service exam, my parents were very happy. It was because I was always told by my father to aim for a stable job as much as possible. If I was asked whether civil service jobs are stable, I'd have to say there's no certainty in modern society. However, at present, there are no major troubles, and I expect to continue working as a public servant. There's a reason why my father recommended a stable job. After graduating from university, he chose to work at a startup. Filled with enthusiasm for his new career, he aimed to improve his skills and jumped into a company with only 10 employees. However, sustaining a business for years is a significant challenge. The company my father joined unfortunately went bankrupt after two years. While struggling to find a suitable re-employment, my father decided to start his own business. Lacking experience, he started in the food industry and gradually grew his business. As the number of stores increased, he hired many employees and kept an eye on daily sales and profits. Since most of the stores were operated in renovated vacant houses or owned properties, there was no worry about rent. As a result, as the number of customers increased, the revenue grew, and he built a considerable fortune over 35 years. However, he also experienced many hardships during that process. The instability of a life as an entrepreneur accumulated daily stress. As profits began to rise, people motivated by money gathered, leading to difficulties in human relationships. Sometimes, employees would even take off with the store's funds. Building wealth was not easy. Therefore, I think my father wanted me to avoid the hardships he experienced and wished for a comfortable life for me. I am satisfied with my job as a public servant, a job that suits my nature. While not affluent, I can maintain a normal life without any issues. Hence, I believe stable days like these are the best. I'll be home late tomorrow, so I don't need dinner. That was my husband, Ben, informing me. This wasn't the first time he had said this. After dinner, while I was washing the dishes, I asked while wiping my hands. Working overtime again? Is the factory that busy? It's a busy period right now. Ben works in a semiconductor manufacturing plant on the assembly line. Having worked in this job for 18 years since graduating high school can be extremely challenging, considering you process parts every day for 8 hours straight. It's nothing for me, but for Ben it seems to be easier than using his brain. I can understand since semiconductors have been scarce recently. Must be tough. Yes, so I might be a bit late. Understood. Take care. Lately, it's become common for him to come home late, sometimes not returning until after midnight in the worst case. I can hardly believe he's working this late, so he's probably having a drink somewhere after work. I understand the urge to unwind with alcohol, but I feel the frequency has increased too much. However, it's difficult to say that to Ben. Telling him not to drink when he's exhausted from his daily demanding job might provoke a backlash. Fortunately, his drinking expenses are covered by his own allowance, so it's not a big issue. As I watch Ben head to the bedroom, I roll my shoulders extensively. Lately, my shoulder pain has worsened. Life with Ben is full of mismatches, and it seems like the mental stress is starting to manifest itself physically. I try to tell myself not to overthink. I met Ben during my second year of high school. He was attending a nearby boys' high school and approached me during a cultural festival. Initially hesitant when the younger Ben asked for my contact information, I eventually gave in to his persistent approach. 
When I asked why he was so interested in someone as plain as me, he shyly admitted that he liked my appearance. On the other hand, I had a rather frivolous impression of Ben at first, so I was quite worried. However, contrary to my expectations, his sincere personality became evident, and I gradually found myself drawn to him. Even after Ben started working post high school and I became a civil servant following university, he has always been my partner. We got married at 27 but haven't been blessed with children. It may not be possible anymore, but I feel our life together is not bad. As long as I can spend the future with the present Ben, that's enough. He probably feels the same. In the midst of these peaceful yet busy days, an unexpected call came to my phone. Hello? Kathy. Oh, good. You're there. Are you at work? Yes, what's up? A call from my mother during a weekday in the afternoon was unusual, signaling something must have happened. I asked her why she called. We have a problem. Your father suddenly collapsed. And today, we got the results from the tests. He's been diagnosed with colon cancer. Dad has cancer? I can't believe it. The word cancer from my mother left me shocked. We've never had cancer in our family before. But it's true that my father, being a business owner, had neglected his health checkups. So, it's not surprising that the disease was discovered late. I'm telling the truth. And it seems to be quite advanced. That's terrible. But aren't there advanced treatments for cancer these days? Unfortunately in his case, they said he only has a few months left. A few months? That's unbelievable. It was an unbearable reality. At 60, my father's rapid cancer progression made sense. Due to the late discovery, the cancer was terminal, and despite medical advancements, treatment would be challenging, my mother explained through tears. I understand. I'll return home for a bit. I'll talk to Ben too. That would be helpful, Kathy. My father is an important figure to me. I couldn't just stand by when he's in trouble. Ben would understand. Distracted, I finished my work and headed home. Ben, who had returned home unusually early, noticed my somber demeanor and asked, What's wrong? You seem down. Ben was enjoying a beer in the living room. I shared everything about my mother's call with Ben and discussed returning to my parents' home for a while. That's worrisome. Understood. Support your father while you're there. Thank you. Sorry for not being able to prepare meals while I'm away. No problem. I've been getting home late from work lately. I'll just eat out in the meantime. But you should have a proper meal once in a while. Don't worry, I'll be careful. Ben listened calmly. Feeling reassured, I started packing for my trip home the next day. As bedtime approached and I was about to head to my room, I heard Ben's voice on the phone from his room. He must be talking to someone. I didn't intend to eavesdrop, but I stopped in my tracks when I caught a snippet of his conversation. It seems he will pass away soon. Can you do something about the matter we discussed earlier? Pass away? Was he talking about my father? Yes, that's right. I understand. Please take care of it once he's gone. It wasn't clear who he was talking to or what the arrangement was but it was evident that the conversation was about my father's situation. Why use such a term as gone? Ben had never spoken disrespectfully about my father. Even if their relationship wasn't especially close, Ben wasn't the type to be indifferent in such a critical situation. Yet, why does it seem like Ben doesn't care about my father? Even though my father is terminally ill, He's still alive, and discussing matters after he is gone with someone else is inappropriate. At that moment, my trust in Ben wavered. Since then, I couldn't shake off my suspicions about Ben. Take care, Ben said cheerfully as he saw me off, but I couldn't stop thinking about his phone conversation on my way home. It seemed like he was plotting something. If it's related to my father, it must be about money. I never told Ben about the extent of my father's wealth. I felt discussing finances might lead to problems, so I decided we could discuss inheritance when the time came. At this stage, I didn't see the necessity to talk about it. I wasn't hiding it. I just thought it was premature. But what if Ben knew about my father's wealth and was targeting it? I shouldn't think about it too much. While trying to dispel these negative thoughts, I spent time supporting my father and enjoying pleasant conversations. 
I'm grateful, Kathy, mom. I'm a lucky man. You don't have to be so formal. It's too early to be thankful. We tried to maintain a cheerful atmosphere while looking at my father's calm smile. The last moments with my father ended three months later. Neither my mother nor I were fully prepared for the premature goodbye. During the funeral, I was in a daze, struggling to accept the reality that my father was no longer in this world. On the other hand, Ben was oddly cheerful, which felt unsettling to me. It wasn't until a week after the funeral, as I was drinking alone in the living room, that Ben approached and said, The hassle is finally over. Crossing his arms and clasping his hands behind his head, he spoke with a cold gaze. Hassle? Yes, exactly. I was hoping your father would kick the bucket a bit sooner. But even after that, there were still procedures like the funeral to deal with, so it was a pain in the butt. How can you say that? Someone has died, my father at that. How can you talk like that? I couldn't help but retort to Ben's astonishing statement. It became clear that Ben had actually wished for my father's early death. I remembered the phone conversation about my father. What were Ben's true intentions? When can we receive the inheritance? Your family is quite wealthy, right? I know there's a substantial fortune to be had. At that moment, I understood what Ben had been aiming for. I never imagined Ben would have his eyes on my family's wealth. I had never discussed my family's financial situation with Ben. However, it seems Ben knew that my father had substantial assets. You look like you're wondering how I knew. I can understand. My family was always poor. Securing daily meals was a struggle. On the other hand, I heard your family was wealthy and your parents often went on trips. Just that fact alone made it clear your family was affluent. That's why I made some inquiries beforehand. Inquiries? With whom? Ben used the word inquiries after guessing my family's financial situation. The day Ben was on the phone in the bedroom flashed through my mind and I wondered if that was the inquiry he mentioned. I asked a real estate lawyer acquaintance about the old man's inheritance. I'm going to make sure to receive the inheritance properly. What? I was shocked that he had discussed the inheritance with someone else without my consent and doing so while my father was still alive. At that moment, I began to doubt whether the person in front of me was truly my husband. You'll get a response soon. Just wait. With that, Ben returned to the bedroom. He was probably going to contact that lawyer again. I was just astonished by his unbelievable actions. Why would he investigate my family's inheritance on his own? Is there any other spouse who would do such a thing? Inheritance is a matter our family should discuss, not for Ben to get involved in. My trust in his actions wavered and I started avoiding conversations with him. We spent some time without speaking, but the situation changed drastically a month later. Putting aside Ben's previous comments on inheritance, the estate was formally transferred to my mother and me. I inherited my father's mansion worth $2 million and felt the weight of this asset. I had no intention of moving into the mansion right away, and it seemed a waste to just leave it unused. While I was contemplating whether to turn it into a vacation home or sell it, Ben suddenly spoke to me after not having exchanged words for days. Hey Kathy, how are you doing? How ironic, considering we lived under the same roof. Ignoring his words, I reached for a book nearby, but he continued. Listen, I've changed the ownership of the mansion you inherited to my name. I stopped reading and stared at him in astonishment. What are you talking about? Yeah, I asked that real estate lawyer to proceed with the title transfer. You did a title transfer, really? Yes, really. I was speechless. Not only did he do it behind my back, I also had a problem with the lawyer involved. Now the house is mine. If you have a problem with that, we can get a divorce. And I'll be giving the house to my family. My brother has been wanting a larger house, so I want to make him happy. Just after my father's death, Ben was happily talking about changing the house to his name, and I felt dizzy. It seemed unlikely that a title transfer could be done so easily. And for his family to move in? I thought Ben might be misunderstanding something but was at a loss for words. His actions infuriated me and I couldn't let this go. It would be better to plan and retaliate rather than confront him with words. If that's the case, I don't mind getting a divorce, but won't you regret it? 
Ben seemed surprised that I would accept a divorce so readily. Regret? There's no way I would. Ben replied with full confidence. Will he truly not regret it? If so, I won't hold back either. If he regrets it later, that's his problem. I smirked inwardly at Ben's naivety. I decided to use every means possible to gather information about Ben's personal life. I decided to take a vacation and inspect Ben's room while he was at work. Ben's room was a mess, with various items scattered all over the floor. There, I found something and quietly slipped it into my pocket. Next, I reached for the computer on Ben's desk and launched the messaging app. I see, this person is the real estate lawyer dealing with legal issues. The messages exchanged with James Owen were appalling. They were mostly about money. The discussions were about how to illicitly acquire funds. I sighed in surprise. It seemed pitiful that Ben was following such a person's instructions. After leaving the room, I headed to a certain location. After repeating tiring tasks, I went to confirm Ben's greed. The deeper I investigated, the more I realized what kind of person I've actually been living with. That sent a chill down my spine. After concluding the investigation about Ben and feeling completely detached, I decided to file for divorce. My marriage with Ben ended legally once the divorce papers got granted at the municipal office. It was an unexpected separation, but I no longer had any affection towards Ben, who disdained my father. The Ben I knew was nowhere to be found. The investigation revealed Ben to be an unbelievable person. After submitting the divorce papers, the house was no longer mine. In fact, the house was purchased in Ben's name from the beginning, with a mortgage taken out. I considered moving out, but Ben did not return to the house afterward. He's probably living in the mansion I inherited. He might be living comfortably now, but how long will that happiness last? I calmly thought about Ben's future. Three days later, Ben finally appeared before me. Kathy, has the divorce already been granted? He asked anxiously as he entered through the front door. He came back suddenly and asked an impertinent question, to which I responded, What? So, we're divorced, right? Ben exclaimed loudly. He seemed to be in extreme distress. Yes, it was granted three days ago. So, we are now strangers to each other. What? What does that mean? Disappointment gradually appeared on Ben's face. Despite his own desire for divorce, I wished he wouldn't adopt a blaming attitude. Why would you make such a unilateral decision? Divorce, really? Unilateral? You're the one who wanted a divorce, remember? What are you talking about now? Ben fell silent at my logical response. His sudden issue with the divorce was clear to me. Kathy, please, let's start over. Otherwise, I'll. Ben knelt down, looking dejected. While feeling sorry for him, I asked, Did something happen? I had a rough idea of what was going on but decided to delve deeper. Just now, debt collectors came looking for me. I tried contacting James Owen, but he seems to have changed his phone number and I can't get through. I sent an email but got no response. It looks like I've been deceived by him. James Owen was that self-proclaimed real estate lawyer. While Ben's explanation was fragmented, I grasped the gist of the situation. It became clear what Ben had been involved in when I searched through his room. It seems you were obsessed with gambling. There were gambling receipts scattered all over your room. I also investigated your visits to the local casino. You've been going there for almost a year, right? Is that why you ran out of funds? Checking our joint bank account, I noticed gradual withdrawals that I couldn't recall and it turned out you were also taking money from our savings. Is that why you were duped by that real estate lawyer? Exactly. Ben had been secretly spending his days gambling without my knowledge. The reason for his late returns was not due to drinking parties but because of gambling. When the inheritance from my father came up, it must have seemed like an opportunity for him. He had consulted with the so-called real estate lawyer Owen on how to get his hands on the inheritance. Yes, that's right. I know gambling is wrong, but I was deceived by that person. The grand mansion that Kathy inherited didn't become mine. I'll go bankrupt at this rate. That would be sad, right? That's why I'm asking for help. How ironic of him to propose divorce only to beg for reconciliation later. 
I felt contempt rather than anger for the pitiful behavior of my former partner. Has he forgotten that he secretly wished for my father's death and insulted him? I couldn't even consider that man as my ex-husband. What? What are you talking about? You're the problem, aren't you? Sympathy. I have no such feelings for you. After all, getting deceived was also due to your carelessness. The real estate inherited from my father is in my name and not subject to division. Changing its ownership without consent is impossible. Yet, you were naive enough to get deceived by James Owen and now you come asking for help? I will never forgive you, not in a lifetime. Seeing my face filled with anger, Ben got scared. I opened the front door, leaving him aside. If you don't mind, I will move to the luxurious house I inherited from my father. As for you, try to manage your life in this house. Oh, and don't forget about the loan repayment. Good luck. Wait. Despite his call from behind, I coldly left him behind and walked away with dignity. Seven days later, I was surprised by an unexpected call. Seeing the name displayed on the screen, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Ben's mother. I answered the phone, anxious that she might criticize me for the divorce. However, the words I heard were completely unexpected and surprising. Kathy, I'm truly sorry. My son seems to have committed something unforgivable towards you. I'm honestly at a loss for words on how to apologize. Her voice was filled with deep regret and apology. I responded with some confusion. No, there's no need for an apology. Please don't worry about it. But she didn't accept my words. No, I can't just leave things as they are. I heard my son is trying to have you shoulder his debt repayments. And I'm both shocked and profoundly disappointed. We plan to give him strict guidance at home from now on. I've warned him to be prepared for a tough time. We won't let him gamble ever again and we'll teach him the importance of money management. For a while, he'll have to take on all responsibilities for work and home life on his own, she expressed her firm resolve. Ben's mother felt strong anger towards her son's inappropriate actions and he was about to face some harsh days, she passionately explained. I secretly hoped to see how Ben would confront this. Feeling this was a just retribution for him, who scorned my father and tried to swindle away the property I cherished. I had no ounce of sympathy for him. I genuinely hoped he would dedicate himself to repaying his debts. And as planned, I moved to the magnificent mansion I inherited from my father. This new home, furnished and requiring no additional purchases, filled me with a profound sense of satisfaction for the new life ahead. Although I left behind clothes and other small items at the old house, the excitement for the liberating life ahead made me unstoppable. The new residence was spacious, an extravagance for one person. Currently, I'm not keen on remarrying. However, if fate smiles at me and I meet a soulmate again, I'll invite that special person to this expansive loving space. Imagining the expression on the future spouse's face as they enter this house brought a smile to mine. This hopeful anticipation is a significant light of hope for me now. And I sincerely say, thank you, Dad. This valuable house, his last gift, is more than a physical space. It's the foundation for starting a new life, a place that connects me to the past and steps into the future.